Hey everyone, welcome to Breakout Wednesday for the 16th of October 2024. It's actually Tuesday, 9 p.m. on the West Coast and, um, you know, just after midnight actually on the East Coast. So it is Wednesday officially in Sydney right now. Now, um, first of all, remember this is not financial advice, not a financial advisor, simply a video blog on how one trader sees the market and everyone needs to take responsibility for their own decisions. All right, so here's a chart of the S&P 500. It's going up, right? We're in a bull market. No, it's easy as that. I'm not going to show a chart of the NASDAQ and the All Lords because they all look the same. Last week, I was talking about TLX and how it's my bread and butter and how it's type set up and how we'd have this base, big air pocket, but then we'd form this tight right hand side and this handle and then it's had to break out. So I've been filled on that. It's early days. And you know what I don't want to do is sell too quickly, okay? I, have, I made bank on this PME trade I talked about, but... I could have made such big a bank if I didn't sell it early. And the trick in a bull market, and I, was talk, I always talk about this in any bull market we're in since I launched Breakout Wednesday, but, you know, like that COVID bull market that, you know, just remember, you know, the, the money's made in sitting. Sitting on your damn ass and never selling anything that's going up and trending. That's how the big money's made. Read all the all the books, you know, all the market wizard books, you know, the, the, the same story, every single interview that, that, that these guys give. Let your winners run, cut your losers quickly. That is the key to making big, big, big bank in a bull market, right? And so um, in my mind, we're in a bull market and it's time for me to sit with my winners as long as I can, okay? Um, it, it's different to, to, the, to the sideways ranging market that we've had a bit of lately, I mean, not that long ago. It's like, you know, you're hitting running, you know, like if the market's grinding sideways, it's like you've got to get in, get out before the market tanks on you. But but when you're in this trending, awesome bull market, got to let the winners run, all right? Okay. Um, the other one I talked about um, last week was NVIDIA. Okay. Can, I think people have been sleeping on it, broke out of this big base, still in it. Obviously, it's just getting started, touch wood, AVH. Okay, didn't break out, but still formed this handle, came back and gave a little flush out. So she's got something that's real shaping up there on AVH. And what was another one? And Marvel, okay, Marvel had a you know, breakout last night, so it's early days on Marvel. So now I'm just gonna quickly do some scans. Um, now, first of all, um, I've obviously pre-ranged a, a watch list here. I'm just gonna go to Davis and um, go in here and just select a 10 period top box confirmation. What that does is just look for you know, Davis boxes have been basing for 10 days or more. And, you know, generally speaking, I rarely take, you know, bases with less than 10 days. So when I'm trying to save time, I'll increase that to 10. And then I click first box, trying to find something that hasn't gone up heaps already. Um, close above the 50 exponential moving average and lessen and, and make sure that, you know, that it does at least 250,000 shares a day so that I don't get stuck in shit, the liquid, you know, pieces of crap, right? And the first one that comes up for me is car group, right? Now car is one of these stocks, like I class it, I class it really in the same category as say, you know, your zero or um, REA in the sense that I understand these guys have different businesses, but <clears throat> they have good businesses, right? They're dominating their little niche and um, and they've got awesome you know, return on capital. And so car group had this big sideways base Poked its head above it, but it had this run from the 200 day and then bang, bang, and then broke, you know, broke above those highs, but you know, it was exhausted because it just run from its 200 day, all right? And then it come, and then it's come up and it's had a tight retracement and it's basing here in this Davis box. So car group to me is, is textbook, classic, um, yeah, and I've got to put my money where my mouth is on that and, 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 and get in it and get long on a break of, on a break of that, right? So car group's the first one. Now let's just run through this, this results. CDA, okay, co um, Coden. So obviously very nice uptrend, um, you know, really has run a long way, um, and then it's basing here. All right, you know, it's, it's a bit extended and like probably more, more of a later stage Davis box base. So that one's for, not for me. I'm gonna leave that one, but I'm gonna take C car ahead of that bit. You know, I'm just finding some interesting Davis boxes um, with this 10 day setting just to show everyone. Uh, Charter Hall Group talked about this. Like the REITs, the REITs have been strong lately. Like they've, they've had a long period of underperformance, haven't they? But I think maybe they've had a bit of a change in character, um, and you know, and they're starting to shape up. And and CHC really is, you know, it's had this big gap up, nice rally base in. Okay, if we go on just some um, moving moving average for a sec and put the kind of Bollinger bands on, really compressing. Okay, 
um, you know, and that's obviously what I like to see when things have been basing and tightening for long enough. Another way to look at that these days is just put the RVM indicator up. And if you get this long period of green action, it's just showing a real VCP type pattern there, okay? Um, and so, you know, I thought that was interesting. I, I, I'm probably going to trade that. You know, that is just basing for long enough for me. I think the probability is pretty good. Um, well, let's keep scrolling through. MPWR, okay, monolithic power systems on the NASDAQ, okay, it's a semi stock. Um, and and this is this is kind of perfect for me, guys. Like, if you have a look at this BCP, so you've got like a bottom, a bottom, a bottom, a bottom. All these little swing lows are just getting higher and higher and higher and just contracting. It's a classic BCP, a semi triangle type thing. I know it's not a textbook, a semi triangle bit, but I think people get caught up with all that textbook shit. You know, it's like, what's happening here? BCP's happening. We've got massive resistance up here, we've got rising bottoms, okay. Um, if you go look in here, the volume is pretty low, but this is a high cap stock, and so, you know, large cap stock, and so the volume doesn't really dry up as much as it does on the small to mid cap stocks, okay? Um, anyway, MPWA, you got NVIDIA rallying, MPWR setting up, um, monthly power systems, a lot of the semi stocks are being breaking out, so um, hopefully sector strength there, um, and we get a secular rotation in back into the semis, um, and we have a pretty textbook perfect setup in MPWR, right? Now let's get through to the next one, P and R. Look, this is I did, this is just an interesting base, isn't it? Um, it's got six point four five billion uh, issued. Okay, let's just go to Nvidia. How many has Nvidia got issued? Uh, issued. Oh yeah, shit, twenty five billion. Well, I'll be damned. <laughs> um, but obviously, it's a large cap stock, right? And it's American. Let's just go, holy shit, that's a, that's a massive company, isn't it? Um, what was I talking about? Let's just go back to P&R. Okay, no, the P&R, um, obviously there's a lot of them. Um, and, you know, there's this whole theory that if something's tightly held, there should be very few of them and they, they move quicker. And, you know, I've talked about it before, but it, you know, I went back, if I go back through my last thousand trades and I look at the stocks that have billions and billions in issued, I, didn't have, I don't actually have a higher win rate in the stocks that have really low numbers of stocks uh, shares issued so you know I, I i don't place as much importance on it as others but i do get why people do it and i respect it and i probably think that that's got it's a good point you know and they probably are right but i just for me the most important thing is the chart pattern uh you know is that chart pattern epic uh is there massive resistance and tightening of that of that volume and price. If there is, I tend to overlook a lot of the other shit and just go for it, you know. Anyway, P and R, <clears throat> let's move on. Uh, SLGN, okay, this is like a boring metal glass and plastic stock bit. This came up in a Darvis man on the Darvis box on the Nissi. On balance volumes are dropping off a lot, but you know, I tend not to give it too much to you know two shits about that. I'll tell you what happened here before this big rally, on balance volume dropped off, right? Bang, and then it formed a low and it rallied. Um, I, I would argue that on balance dropping, on balance volume falling is a good sign that's about to go up more than it's about to, you know, um, go down. I just, I don't, I don't agree with it that on balance volume is a very good indicator and I should just probably delete it from my chart. There we go. Um, SLGN basing, um, in a big box. So that is pretty epic setup. Um, this SS1 on the ASX. So, um, Big box, nice Davis box, um, and this is a new cap stock. It's some silver stock. I mean, shit, you know, I don't, I'm probably not going to trade that. I mean, if that could just, not now, like this big candle, if, the, if this can just base it, I just thought it was interesting because it's a new float. Uh, but you know, it's on the watch list. I'm going to watch that unfold. If that, if that just like, just gives me another few weeks there and just tight action, then sure, I might have cracked it. But that was an interesting one just to quickly talk about. WAY on the NASDAQ likewise. This is a new float, a uh, new float here. Nice rally, dang, ascending triangle. One, two, three, and it's just tight in. So I thought that was pretty interesting as well. All right now, before I piss off, the only other thing I really want to talk about was Shaver Group. Still not taking my eye off this guy. Um, quickly, monthly chart, gigantic volume. Um, daily chart, just base in here right under it okay so i didn't like it how it would run up from the, the bottoms here here and then stopped i mean right straight from the bottom to here i like that it's now formed this kind of 
tight right hand side and it's just forming there the longer it sits here the better all right just absolutely zero shits if that sits there for like three weeks or just the longer it sits there the better that setup gets all right and then the last setup was just quickly um chubb all right chubb's a big insurance stock boring boomer stock on the um on the nissi uh, and you know, but I'm not against those stocks. Okay, as, as those who listen know, I've been in Suncorp on the on the ASX for a long time, and it's been a been a really good holding on the self and the super fund bit. But on Chubb, um, you know, we had the huge hurricane in, in Florida the other day, and you know, it sold off for like one day and then rallied. And I guess my thoughts are is that it, all that shit can happen in the states, and then this thing gives zero shits. It just flushes out and just flushes out of these weak hands of people selling because they're scared about you know a million a million and ten insurance claims all at once and then it just shugs it off and then comes back up and starts challenging new highs again it's just shrugging off bad news and you know in a bull market the strongest stocks they'll get bad news and they'll just they'll just shrug it off you know uh, and just give zero shits about it and then just break out and get on with it and they're the best setups you know those, those if you're watching the news i mean carefully and you see them just they just shrug off the bad news and then break out um you know double up on those ones i mean they're, they're just they're just amazing setups so i'm watching watching chubb just from an interesting point of view um after what's happened over the last few weeks and and the setups that are occurring in the insurance names that's it guys some big setups there big bull market going on uh it's just all about cutting those losers very very quickly controlling risk and then letting those winners ride you know take care everyone until next week bye